Hi, it's Colleen Schmidt from Divination Counseling Service. Here to present a tarot card. Actually something new and different that I want to do. So I'm just going to talk about a tarot card today. I just pulled a random card and thought, you know what, why not? See how it goes. So we're going to do a little video here. Um, see how it goes over and just talk about a card. And we can say that this is the card of the day, so we might look at it that way. And I'm not going to put a date on it because as I put it out there, you might not see this till next week. But if you do look at it, then I'm going to assume that you want to hear or need to hear what I have to say about this card. So I pulled out the Knight of Sword. Okay, so I'm just hoping that you can all see this. And I'm purposely not wearing my glasses because I took the anti-reflective stuff off and it looks terrible. <laughs> it's really reflective. So here we have the Knight of Sword. And yeah, it's pretty cool looking dude on a horse. So we know he's not too old. His sword is up and ready for action. The horse is in motion, as they often are with the knights, but particularly this knight. So sometimes the swords are associated. I'm using the Tarot for the Moon Garden, by the way. This is, um, it's my telephone deck. <laughs> and sometimes I'll use Rider Waite. Today, for some reason, I'm going to use what's in front of me, and that was my, my phone deck. So this card fell out and it was kind of interesting because I, not really superstitious, but you know, I try to read the messages and I really felt that there was a good message in this card. So I want to share that with you. I have been in a period of time and we haven't, I haven't been on or done a video in a couple of months because it was just time for me to take a hiatus you know, get more in touch with myself, I was going through some astrology stuff, uh, my own astrology, and I was working. So putting all those things together, when I'm doing um, client charts, sometimes I prefer not, I just, it's like writing a book, you just want to do the project. So I have been trying to figure out how I'm coming back and what I'm going to do when I come back. And I was really focused on it. And what the Knight of Swords represents to me as a reader and I think to every reader as you read the cards kind of grow on you and you begin to have a relationship with the cards and so I read cards way differently than other readers I watch people online and I learn things but I can tell you that there are a lot of cards that I do not read the same so now I am pretty much the same on a Knight of Sword. When you think of the sword and the sword itself as an air quality, it is that of focus, determination. We got some activity in this card. And by the way, this takes place at night. Okay, so it's not, it's, you know. It really brings to mind this idea of being focused and determined. And this is when the card is upright and really just driven to find what it is that your place is. So hopefully I find it, apparently I'm driven, but it is about that drive. Um, it is associated with air, but when I think of this in an air sign, I would have to say to you that I would think more along the lines of an Aquarius um, more so than say a Libra. Okay. And the reason why I say that is because Aquarians, you know, tend to create a lot of activity. They are a fixed sign, which means that they are doers by nature. Now that's just me. And I don't really like to use my astrology, although I do. And I know my clients will tell you that. I do it all the time. I like to use my astrology and my tarot, but then it's very hard to take the astrologer, the astrology out of an astrologer. So um, that's how I see this card. Now, with that said, this is a really good card to get into a reading because it means that they are on the right track. 
that there's a lot of focus and determination, that the energy is really geared and aimed at one direction, okay? And normally that's usually pretty good, unless it's really directed at something that's unhealthy for them or for other people, then the reader would be so advised by other cards in the reading. But generally, if you pulled this out and it were in the upright position, it would be telling you that you're focused and you're determined and that, you know, you're, you're going to probably do it because you have the drive, the ambition, along with that determination. Now, if the card is in reverse and it would fall out that way or would make itself known that way, and you know what's interesting with the cards is the longer you read them, and I read both upside down as well as right side up, so to me, you know, I just shuffle and I shuffle any which way I can or I have the client do it if they're here. And I don't care how they come out because how they come out is how they're supposed to come out. So I read cards in reverse as readily as I read them upright. But there are occasions where I'll pull a card out and I just know it's the wrong direction. And it might be because the rest of the reading has a flow already going and that's like, oh no, this is supposed to be the other way. But the longer you read, the more you have a relationship with the cards, the more you get a feel when they start to come out that maybe this card doesn't belong here, or maybe this card is in a wrong position, like upside down or right side up. And, and what I mean by that is, is that I'm, I'm explaining, like if you're doing, I don't do too many Celtic crosses. I did them a lot online, but many readings maybe. But I don't do those as much as I'm a regular reader, which means I tend to read all 78 cards and I start with what's called a Manila reading. Well, then the cards are falling in categories past, present, guidance, future, however you want to look at it, rather than in a Celtic cross where you have, and I'll have to do a video on this, where you have each position representing the past, what crowns you, what's ahead of you, you know, what the foundation is. And sometimes when reading that, I'd be like, oh no, this card really belongs here. That doesn't happen often, but it does. And we as readers have to learn to listen to our own intuition if we're going to be selling our intuition to other people. But with that said, as I've done that little dissertation, there's an example of the card in reverse. To be scattered, to be torn, to be going in three and five directions, to be, and again, remember, it's the horse, it's the man, and he's like, yeah, and what, you know, and he's doing this, and it's like, whoa. Okay, so that's a scattered energy. It can create chaos and havoc. It can make us feel frustrated and restless, like we're not going anywhere. So it is the opposite. And not all cards mean the opposite in reversed. But I think of the Knight of Sword as an energy that is in opposition when it is right side up versus when it's upside down. It is an individual, but that individual is often us. And I think that one of the best ways to learn how to read the cards is to start with yourself. But you have to also be objective when you do that and realize that we're also the Knight of Sword. We all have the ability to be scattered and torn. We all have the ability to be focused and determined, okay? When you're reading for other people, it would apply to an individual, generally a person who is a subordinate or younger or is like on the rise of wherever they are. Or you're making a connection of this type of individual, or you are seen as. So it's gonna really depend on what the rest of the cards say. Hopefully that was helpful. I'll do more of these, let's see how they go. But until we meet again, I wish you all only happy readings. Oh, and thanks for watching the video. A big thank you to all my subscribers, I'm terrible. Thank you guys.